Hello and welcome back. It's been a while. Um, it's been absolutely ages, isn't it? Yeah, I do apologise, people. Um, yeah, it, it's been quite a while since I posted a video. Um, since I have, um, we've reached a thousand subscribers, um, which is wonderful news. Um, even though I haven't been putting much content out for you, so I, I kind of hang my head in shame. But you've you've stayed, you've subscribed, you've liked, you've stayed loyal. So you know, I really appreciate that kind of level level of support. Um, even though I've been quite naughty. Um, so I thought I'd um, put up a video. Um, this is going to be a the first in a series of little shorts I'm going to do. So so really quick videos, and I'm already a minute in, so I'm, I'm going to try and stop waffling. But I'm going to do some short videos, which um, are things that I've either seen on the community, people have asked me, they've DM'd me, or I've you know just just having conversations with people. I've been a bit surprised that it hasn't been in things like um, you know the admin course um, and the likes of late. Um, but before we get into it, because I will get into it quite quick, um, before we get into it, and I say this on all my videos if you're new here, um, but yeah, if you haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead and consider subscribing, um, smash the bell icon so you, you'll get notified when I post um, new videos like this one, not once every eight months or however long it's been. Right, anyway, let's get cracking. So this video, what we're going to do is we are going to um pre-populate a user reference field on a form with the person that's logged in and we're going to look at a couple of different ways of doing that um but it's something that that you know some of us may take for granted um but we do see it all the time so we've got in what i would call the back end so you've got your incident and change and problem forms you've got user reference field caller id assigned to for example and then we see those on the portal so we see them in terms of catalog items and that's what we're going to play with today. So on screen at the minute, you can see a out the box catalog item password reset, which is all there. This is fresh. I haven't done anything with it at all. Um, so we're going to play with this one. OK, so what you're going to need to do is go to your service portal, um, navigate to password reset. And here we can see we've got this um, field here whose password needs to be reset. Now, what we're going to make is that is going to be the person that's logged in, in which case um, the administrator. So we're going to do that in two different ways. OK. So the first way. We're going to go to the item itself. So I've got maintain items. I've found this record producer password reset and I'm just coming to the item itself here. So the first way we're going to do that. And I'm a big fan of um, opening new tabs, by the way. I don't like having too many tabs, but I, I am a big fan of opening a new tab so I can always go back to where I came from. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at this, um, the variable whose password needs to be reset. I've covered variables in a different video. Um, and this is the question here. Um, whose password needs to be reset? This is the name of it, caller underscore ID. So the first thing we, thing we can do is we can set, quite simply, a default value. Okay. Which would be something like this. Okay, so we've got access to GS there, and we've got access to this object here, GS, and the method of get user ID. Okay, if we click save there, if you were to go hunting around um, the sys dictionary or, or look at other reference fields in the back end, you will probably find this. And that's one of the things about ServiceNow is that. Sometimes we don't remember stuff um, off the back of our heads, um, but what it is good to know is where we can go and find um, something we know we've seen before and we want to use or want to reuse it. So, and that, that's one of the, um, the things that we should always bear in mind um, when it comes to ServiceNow. So, as I've done that, I click save, we've refreshed, lo and behold, the logged in person is now there. Wonderful, that's one way. The other way, let's just remove that. You know, drop some comments in if you've got um, another way um, in the uh, in the comment section. You know, I'm sure people are shouting at the screen now what they would do. The other way we can do it is via a client script. So if we go to catalog client scripts, we can call this populate. What was it? Caller. Uh, caller ID. 
we can create a onload client script and we can type our script here. So we would type something like, um, we'll declare a variable, we'll call it logged in user, why not? And this is g underscore, g underscore, right, user ID. And we've got access to the g user um, object there and we can we can access this G, um, user ID so we can quite simply say if we have something so if logged in user is not empty we could do that there's a different ways you can do that I understand that um, then we're going to set the value so G underscore form set value of the field name we saw that before which was caller ID I believe and that is equal to logged in user. Okay, so we're declaring our variable. We're getting um, the logged in user, uh, the ID of the logged in user, sys ID in this case. We're saying where that um, contains something, then we're going to set the value of the variable. So let's just check I've done everything there. Okay, we'll click save. So we've removed the default value. Remember, we'll go back here. And we'll click there and lo and behold we've got um, the logged in user there as well now there are um, pros and cons of why you use each one um, there you know you can use this this method on method on the front or the back end obviously you, you, you would do it in a client script rather than a catalog client script and there certainly are improvements you can make to this this script as well you know for example we, we should really we could do a glide ajax and get um, not only the value but the display value of the the, the user um, and put that in there, there certainly are improvements but my my point here is to show you some really quick shorts um, different options and i guess part of our role of working within the ServiceNow platform is to pick the best options for the route we're going in um, and we'll always find that in the context of um, i guess the requirement that we're, we're looking to fulfill okay so I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I, I hope this is um, this has been informative. Um, again, it's the first of a, a, a few lines of, of different shorts I'm going to do. Although this one isn't short, so I'm going to talk quicker. Um, but um, yeah, if I don't don't do any more before Christmas or New Year, have a great Christmas um, and a fantastic New Year. And I'll um, speak to you all again in the New Year. Okay, thanks.